Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Meralda, and I'm the lead data scientist from Melio.ai. Today, I will be talking about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. This topic is related to Melio's mission statement, which is to make AI frictionless for everyone. Together with my lead DevOps engineer, we put together this presentation to address the last mile deployment problem with MLOps. We're going to start with introducing the problem with why MLOps is important in solving these issues. Then we will talk briefly about the principles of MLOps and then move on to dissecting the traits of these high performing machine learning teams. We will then give some actionable steps on how you can adopt MLOps to address these challenges and accelerate delivery for your machine learning projects. So this is the typical story of how a data science team first gets started. Business heard that data science is cool, so they hired one data scientist to build one machine learning model. Six weeks later, the POC was wildly successful, so it was prioritized to be put into production. The data scientist then met with the data engineering team who helped to rebuild the data engineering pipeline. Then she met with the infrastructure team who then helped to provision a new infrastructure for the model to be deployed on. After numerous meetings between the three teams and six months later, the model is still not deployed. The data scientist is frustrated, the data engineers are frustrated, and the infrastructure engineers are even more frustrated. The business is not seeing the value that they, are hope, they have hoped for, but why? We expect that if we hire more people, we should be able to generate more value. But the reality often looks more like this. There's a big missed opportunity because there are numerous challenges to productionizing machine learning models. The idea is that if we solve these challenges, we should be able to get the full potential of our talented people. But what are these challenges? We researched this problem and chatted with many of our clients to consolidate this into three main challenges. The first one is around teams and skills. Machine learning is a complex problem and often requires cross-collaboration between multidisciplinary teams. Because of this, machine learning use cases often have multiple stakeholders, which can create friction because of all the varying priorities. The data science team prioritizes model accuracy, the engineering team looks for efficient and error-free pipelines, and the infrastructure team is responsible for security and site reliability. The skill gap is often cited as an issue for collaboration because the responsibility line is blurred and one role might be responsible for issues that span across the entire machine learning life cycle. So data scientists, data engineers, and DevOps engineers are often expected to know more about each other's roles, but do not actually have the skills or the interest to do so. For example, from the recent Anaconda report, the most cited skill shortage for data scientists is good software engineering practice and Docker, and for data engineer is Kubernetes and model monitoring. The second challenge revolves around process and technology. The process that comes from multiple teams and the technology that comes from all the different skills. In an enterprise scenario, the teams are usually only pulled in at the production phase as our previous example. A lot of refactoring needs to happen and unfortunately when things become frustrating, people start pointing fingers. The engineers blame the scientists for poor quality code and the infrastructure gets blamed for everyone by the, for the downtime. What becomes even more confusing is when the model gets deployed, the accountability line is often blurred. If the data scientists are responsible for model accuracy, but now is it the data engineer's responsibility to tell the data scientist that the data has drifted and the model needs to be retrained? With the booming open source project, more mature teams often use different technologies to achieve the best results. But using multiple technologies resulting in maintenance overhead and it becomes very difficult to manage. So the dev environment move quickly with the agile framework, but then now the dev and prod environment can go out of sync very easily if there are no proper processes around dependency management. And of course, there's always the fight for computing resource. When multiple people are working in the same environment, 
This is especially true when the on-prem infrastructure reaches capacity level and infrastructure upgrade is two quarters away. Even though cloud provides great elasticity, but some projects can't go cloud and the cost is always a restricting factor. The last challenge is around risk and governance. If the team considers compliance when the use case is first onboarded, then compliance would not be seen as a challenge. Unfortunately, it is often treated as an afterthought and can ultimately block a use case from going into production. For example, when you have European clients personally identifiable information, but your server location is in South Africa, then you won't be able to train your entire training pipeline in one server location. The same can be said for data and network security, such as poorly managed access control. The more regulated industries are also required by law to explain the models and to ensure that the model is fair and unbiased. All of these issues together is why 83% of ML models don't make it to production. And the ones that do often require extensive babysitting from the teams that develop them. But fortunately for you, the cool people who attended our presentation, we're going to share with you how these challenges can be addressed by ML Ops. ML Ops stand for machine learning operations. It became popular over the past two years when people realized that a lot of DevOps techniques can be used for machine learning lifecycle. A lot of people think that in order to achieve ML Ops, they need to start with choosing the right technology. But Technology really isn't the most important thing. In fact, the ML Ops practice must be language, framework, platform, and infrastructure agnostic. For example, everyone has a different workflow, and that workflow should be informed by ML Ops principles, not the technology you want to try or the technology that is the most popular. The trap of going to technology first will be that if you want to use a hammer, everything will look like a nail to you. Let's quickly talk about the seven ML Ops principles before we dive into how you can use ML Ops to solve these challenges. ML Ops is piggybacked of DevOps, but it's not quite DevOps. Machine learning is heavily dependent on data, compute, and experimentation. So in addition to the two DevOps infinity like circles of development and operations, ML Ops add a big ML component, which is very centered around data and model design. There are seven principles for ML Ops, and we group these principles into three categories, including compliance, development, and deployment. The first one is the overarching one, which is compliance. I'm not really gonna go too much into this since each organization have their own governance structure around it. But in principle, when developing a machine learning use case, data and network security, as well as model explainability and reproducibility need to be considered. This is especially important under the laws such as the GDPR and Poppy. In fact, reproducibility is its own principle in the development category of ML Ops. So on top of reproducibility, the development category includes iterative development and testing. Iterative development comes with the experimental nature of machine learning use cases. The ML Ops practice ties closely with the Agile methodology, which focuses on continuously generating business value in a sustainable way. We break it down into three development phases, which are machine learning development, development, and operations. The first phase is focused on designing a machine learning powered software with very solid business and data understanding. In this phase, we identify potential users and design a solution that solves the problem for that user. The second phase aims to verify that machine learning is indeed the solution to our problem. So we implement a proof of concept model to make sure that is the case. The primary goal of this phase is to deliver a stable quality machine learning model that we can run in production. The third phase is the machine learning operations, which aims to deploy the previously developed model to production by using the established DevOps practices, such as testing, versioning, continuous delivery, and monitoring. 
Because machine learning models are trained based on data, and we know that data change because people's behavior change, so it's important that models are retrained as its performance degrades over time. In order to track the combination of which code, data, and experiment generated which model, we need to version all of them. When being asked by an auditor which data was used to train which model to produce this specific result, the data scientist needs to be able to answer that. The next principle is a well-known but often overlooked software engineering practice. Machine learning projects include three distinct pipelines. There are data engineering, model development, and model deployment pipeline. And each of these pipelines need to be tested. Important tests for data engineering pipeline include data validation, unit testing for features and models, integration testing, especially in the training pipeline. From the modeling perspective, model accuracy, as well as security, fairness, and interpretability need to be tested. We can also test the machine learning infrastructure with stress testing. The model serving portion of the infrastructure also needs to be tested if you are using canary deployment. The last component revolves around operations, which includes continuous deployment, automation, and monitoring. There are three components to the continuous deployment of machine learning models. The first one is the triggering event. Is the trigger a manual trigger by a data scientist, a calendar schedule event, or is it the threshold? The second component is the actual retraining of the model. What are the script, data, and hyperparameters that resulted in this model, their versions, and how they are linked to one another? The last component is the actual deployment of the model, which must be orchestrated by the deployment pipeline with alerting in place. The maturity of machine learning processes can be determined by the level of automation. Machine learning project is based on iterative exp experimentation, so we never really start from the end-to-end -end automation because we don't really know what we're automating anyway. The project typically starts with a manual process. Then once the model is deployed, the training pipeline is then automated. The training pipeline includes the model, the data engineering and model validation. But at this step, the model deployment is still manual. Only after the model is deployed for the second time, we start building the CI-CD pipeline to automate future model deployments. Once the model has been deployed, it then needs to be monitored to make sure that the model is performing as, as expected. We spend so much time and effort developing the model, and it would be such a waste to sacrifice our hard-earned F1 score with poor retraining strategy. It is important to monitor the new data's distribution, the model degradation, systems health, and whether or not you're being attacked. Okay, so that was a quick lesson on ML ops. Now let's see how the high-performing AI teams adopt these principles and make them shine. From our experience working with different clients, we looked at high-performing AI teams who not only have deployed multiple models into production, but have also achieved great ROI and analyzed their common traits. We've categorized these traits into three main topics. The first one is to nurture cross-disciplinary skills with the aim to build teams with T-shaped individuals. Especially in enterprise scenarios, the engineers are often in IT departments and the data scientists are either in their own center of excellence or are part of the business unit. This creates multiple handoff points, and if individuals working on the project are not familiar with both worlds, be it business or engineering, then it will create a lot of friction. The most common scenario is when a data scientist finished prototyping a model and throw it over the wall to the data engineer or to the DevOps engineer to deploy. The code has to be significantly refactored, and we might as well start over again. But if we have T-shaped individuals who understand each other, then we can create a more empathetic and effective team. Everyone is probably familiar with the Venn diagram of how a data scientist needs to be able to derive back propagation from first principles, be a hardcore programmer, and know the business from inside out. Well, the news is this mythical person does not exist. Instead of expecting everyone to be everything, 
we should be realistic and encourage cross-disciplinary collaboration between team and team members. This competency graph is a spectrum rather than a tick box, showing the skills required, including business, math and stats, and engineering. The first group of individuals are, of course, the data scientist, the data science researcher, and machine learning engineers. More towards the left are the data scientists responsible for developing the model. And towards the right are the machine learning engineers look, looking at deploying the model. But in a large machine learning project, you shouldn't only have data scientists and machine learning engineers. They require additional skills that are inherently a part of the job function in other teams. You will need business analysts to make sure that the models are generating business value and are built to spec. You will also need data analysts to make sure that the data from different business units are properly represented and well understood. And you will need BI developers to make sure that the model results can be consumed by the business users. And if you want a machine learning model that is always up and can scale, then you will need the help from the data engineers, software and cloud engineers, and infrastructure engineers. T-shaped individuals are common in agile teams. So from my observation, if a team has multiple roles and skills present, the cross-pollination of these skills come naturally as the project progresses. With all the team members under the same roof, the project success is a shared responsibility. You build it, then you run it. If you have to run it, then you will make sure that you build it well in the first place. Even though I said that we need to build cross-disciplinary skills in a team, but not all of us are lucky to work in a big company that has a big team. If your team does not have a BA or a data analyst as shown on the slide here, then the data scientists often have to be really good at communicating with the business. And if your team doesn't have engineers, then the data scientists have to become more proficient at building good software. The more cross-skilled you are, the easier it is for other people to collaborate with you because everybody will be on the same page already. So moral of the story, strive to become a unicorn. The complex process and technology can be simplified with automation. By converging technologies used by multiple teams, we can alleviate engineering overhead and simplify onboarding process for new team members. Complex processes can be reduced with investment in automation at the start of the project. For example, we can keep dev and prod environments in sync by building, by building and automating these configurations. This reduces error-prone manual tasks. As a simple rule, the first time you do it, do it manually. The second time you do it, think about how to automate it. Then the third time, instead of doing it, you automate it. With all of this being said, the issue with automation is that it becomes extremely tricky if there are too many moving parts that touches the different teams and the different technologies. Let's see how this plays out in a typical machine learning lifecycle. We've plotted the job roles against the timeline of a typical machine learning project. An ML project typically starts from business having a problem to solve and approach a data science team to tackle it. If the teams are collaborating really well, then the data science team will rope in the engineering team early on to design the technical requirements. Once the requirements are gathered, the model development process commences. And if we know that the model will be going to production, then we will elicit the engineer's help to build a production grade data engineering pipeline from the beginning. During the iterative development, the business and the data science team will be collaborating closely to validate that the model is indeed providing the correct predictions and is providing value. When the business eventually signs up on the model, then we'll, we will be moving on to the deployment phase. With the deployment phase, there are a whole bunch of scientific and engineering functions that needs to be done. And these engineering process are, can often be automated. Based on our MOPS principles, the third time you deploy a model, Serving and CICD should be fully automated. The most dynamic part of this process should be 
should remain in the data analysis and the model development. And we should also strive to automate the data engineering pipeline early, especially with common features between the different use cases. The data and model versioning should not be a burden, but a practice that is set up with your normal Git flow. But the issue is that all of these functions come with an array of technologies. And here are the tools and technologies to perform some of these job functions. And this really is just the tip of the iceberg. As you can see, the machine learning landscape can become complex quite quickly, and it is full of new and shiny projects that promise success. The reality is that even though we do want to learn all of the tools and strive to become a unicorn, but it is, it is really impossible in this day and age. Since resource and time are finite, it becomes important for the teams to choose and converge on a standard set of tools. If there are overlapping tools, make an informed decision and move on. Of course, if you're using TensorFlow already, you maybe don't really need to use PyTorch as well. At Nilio, we choose our tech stack based on two premises. Number one, principle over technologies. And number two, reduce complexity by reducing moving parts. We had multiple use cases on different cloud providers, given the nature of the use case. Then we migrated all of our use cases to AWS because using multiple cloud, cloud providers res results in management overhead and high data transfer costs. The different projects also use different source control platforms in the beginning, but we decided to also move everything to AWS so we can use the CI CD that comes with it. So our CI moved from GitHub Actions and Google Cloud Build to AWS Code Commit and Code Pipelines. For infrastructure, we know that we're going container first, so we chose Kubernetes for its rich ecosystem. In terms of language and test suite, we decided on Python for its rich ecosystem on both software engineering and machine learning capabilities. For simple use cases, we decided to use AWS SageMaker since we're already in the ecosystem. And for our use cases that require end-to-end -end customization, we chose Kubeflow because we are already on Kubernetes. And Kubeflow is a very flexible environment, but also comes with a lot of built-in components for good ML ops practices, such as um, or continuous deployment, model and data registry, the meta store, and orchestration. The last trait is pretty much Melio's motto, develop with the end in mind. At the beginning of the project, teams should invest more time in designing a well-architected solution to prevent rework when it's time to productionize. It's even more important to really understand the business question and link a business success metric to the use case. For example, there was a use case where the model had a tremendously high accuracy and the team who developed it was super chapped. But three months later, after the deployment, it had to be shut down. This is because the team did not fully understand the business outcome. So even though the model gave really good predictions for the average user, it drove the VIP users away. Because, surprise, VIP users are the ones who pay. First of all, because of the problem space was not well understood, so the model created an adverse effect. And secondly, without proper monitoring, this negative effect was only picked up in the company's quarterly financial review and ultimately linked back to the deployment of the model. On the same note, data governance and compliance should also be considered in the early stages of the project. For example, if you have European clients, you actually really need to consider what GDPR means for your project. Model explainability is a hot topic in the recent years as black box AI are not accepted by the regulators anymore. If a loan application is getting rejected, then the model better has a good and fair explanation on why the applicant was turned away. This is the same slide at what we previously showed for the typical machine learning lifecycle. Many data science teams only consider the model development portion of ML, which means that model serving, CICD pipeline, data, model, and application monitoring are all out of scope. This creates significant friction because the teams, when developed the model, needs to be deployed. 
In the design phase of the machine learning project, MLOps principles should be adopted. And when developing the model, it's important to think about the operational aspect. First of all, the serving strategy, such as what is the promotion criteria for a model? Then how the data and model will need to be versioned and monitored? And of course, what is the strategy for continuous deployment, such as how will you update the model in production without downtime? And how will you be alerted if the application goes down or you're being attacked? People think machine learning is just model development, but there are so many other things that need to happen to make ML deployment a reality. So next time, instead of asking your team why it takes three months to not deploy a model, ask them to adopt the ML ops principles. Nurture the cross-disciplinary skills in the individual and in the team. Give them the time to automate rather than firefight. And make sure that everyone is aligned with the end goal between the business, the data scientist, the data engineers, and the infrastructure engineers. We are often asked by our clients, how long do you think it will take to productionize our model? And our answer is always, it depends. It depends on how your team skills and collaboration are set up. Whether you have automation and if you build your model with the end in mind. Thank you for your time and I really hope this is useful to you. I will be in the Q&A section, so pop by and come say hi.